James had no idea what had happened. However he was now aware of where he was. He was outside the grounds of Ravenshade Hall. Then suddenly a voice called out to him in mild surprise. James, I says that you? James turned around and there before him was Missy. Her face was one of sheer delight. However James just simply burst into tears. Missy flung her arms around James and held him for a while. It's okay sweetie, please don't cry. Me Willy thinks you look really cute in this pink swimsuit. But just then there came this sheer heat from James's body. Missy quickly stepped away from James. To her utter shock and horror, his entire body burst into flames. No, Missy screamed at the top of her voice. James's body turned into ashes that were suddenly blown away by a mysterious wind that had not been there before. No, no, you cannot do this to me. Can't you see that I need him? Cried out Missy to one at all. Or maybe there was some kind of higher power of some kind that controlled the realm of the dead. Please me begs of you bring him back to me. He's my soulmate, remarked Missy in bitter tears. A deep dark voice suddenly spoke to her. You do realize that if you truly wish to have him with you and for always, that he must die in the realm of the living. Yes, me do realize this and me accepts that. It is only right that he realizes this too and accepts this. Me understands. Very well, use the moonstone pendant and the power of moon magic to bring him back alive. However, he must be in his own clothes and choose to be your girl of his own free will. Yes, I obey great and all-powerful one. Replied Missy. The moonstone pendant began to glow around her neck and Missy began to speak the ancient word of moon magic. Vashna. Juras. Shazal. Karishvar. A shimmering, a luminous glow began to swirl in the middle of the air before Missy. The swirling glow took on the shape of a sphere. The sphere of light stretched and began to change form and then it faded away. Stood now before Missy was James. He looked down at himself. He was aware somehow that he was no longer wearing the pink swimsuit. To his surprise and to his relief, he was wearing his own clothes. However, now Missy looked upset. Missy, what just happened? In a sense, you died. Her voice sounded much mature now. What do you mean? Missy, you are not making any sense. I'm so sorry James. I so wanted you to be my soulmate, but it is not meant to be. Soulmate? What do you mean? I, I can't James, I cannot influence you in any way. What? What do you mean? I don't understand. Then come with me and I shall show you. Missy held out her right hand to James and he took it. James let Missy lead him into the manor of Ravenshade Hall. She took him up the spiral staircase and up to the second floor. She led James all the way down a long corridor to the end where there was a nice pink door. Missy opened it. Inside the room was like a nursery. There was a big crib that looked as though it could actually sleep, two people. There was a big double wardrobe, a big chest of drawer, a bedside cabinet, a display case that was filled with dollies and all kinds of cuddly toys. Missy opened up the wardrobe and it was filled with lots and lots of frilly dresses, they were bigger versions of baby girl dresses. I had kept these for you James. What? But I'm a boy, James protested. I know, cried Missy. James could not understand, he scratched his head. Missy looked upset, but just then, he felt something, it was something he had never realized before. Just then James began to shed all of his clothes. He lay down onto the changing table that was also inside the nursery room. Missy smiled as she went over towards James. She took up the baby oil that was on a side shelf next to the changing table. She began to put the baby oil onto James. Then she powdered him with talcum powder. There was a nice pile of terry toweling nappies. A Missy took up one and she lifted up James's legs high into the air and slid the nappy underneath him.